All right, guys, so today we are going to be breaking down the full Extreme Z Awakening details for all five of the free to play type metal coolers to find out exactly how good this team's going to be, especially compared to the uh, Ginyu Force and Team Bardock, right? So, yeah, with that said, let's uh, jump right into it, starting here with the AGL metal cooler first. And since there's so many units to go through, instead of comparing the uh, pre-EZA details to the post-EZA details, we'll only talk about the EZA details for all five, okay? So, for the AGL Metal Cooler, his leader skill is going to be Accelerated Battle Category Key plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 77%, or All Types Key plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 40%. Super Attack greatly raises defense for one turn and causes supreme damage, and his passive is changes STR key spheres to rainbow key spheres if the character is the first attacker at start of turn, and then attack and defense plus 40% per wicked bloodline category ally on the team up to 200%. All allies key plus two, medium chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, plus an additional chance of evading enemies' attacks, including super attacks, plus 20% with three or more rainbow key spheres obtained, plus an additional defense, plus 25%. Per key sphere obtained, when there is another ally whose name includes Metal Cooler attacking in the same turn. Wow, okay, this guy's gonna be getting a lot of defense. He's gonna be getting a lot of defense on top of the uh, dodge chance of up to, uh, I guess in theory, 50% or so because the medium chance to evade is 30%. This is 20%. I'm not sure exactly how the calculation works, but he's gonna have a decent chance to dodge for sure. And then on top of that, he's getting 25% defense for every key spear obtained. And obviously if you're running a full metal cooler team, you will have another metal cooler on rotation. So yeah, he looks really strong. He looks very, very strong. Maybe not offensively, but defensively. He's maybe gonna be the best defender on the Metal Cooler team. So that is the AGL Metal Cooler. And uh, now let's move on to the tech one right here. Leader skill is Corroded Body and Mind. P plus three, HP attack and defense plus 77% or all types, key plus three. HP attack and defense plus 40%. Super attack greatly raises defense for one turn and causes supreme damage. And passive is changes AGL key spheres to rainbow key spheres if the character is the first attacker at the start of turn and then attack and defense plus 40% per wicked bloodline category ally on the team up to 200% just like the AGL one uh, attacked enemies attack and defense minus 25% for two turns not bad seal the attacked enemy super attack for two turns with three or more rainbow key spheres obtained plus an additional attack plus 25% per key sphere obtained when there's another ally whose name includes metal cooler attacking in the same turn so this guy is more of a uh, debuff specialist I guess right debuffing the enemy's attack and defense by 25% for two turns also sealing them um, he doesn't stun which is interesting but he does have these two debuffs and he also gets 25% attack instead of defense compared to the AGL cooler, so more of a uh, offensive unit, obviously, compared to the AGL metal cooler. Otherwise, his uh, attack and defense buff here is the same. Um, he's changing AGL key spheres uh, to rainbow key spheres instead of, I believe, STR key spheres with the AGL one, right? So, a lot of similarities, but definitely some noticeable differences. And uh, this guy should be hitting pretty hard with the. 25% attack for every key sphere, right? So that is the tech metal cooler. Next up, we have the int metal cooler. Leader skill is target Goku, category allies, key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 77%. I do like the fact that they all lead different categories. Obviously, these leader skills are very low. So unless you're like just starting the game, you're probably not going to be using them as main leaders, but it's still cool that they all lead different categories. So yeah, target Goku this time, or all allies, key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 40%. Uh, 
Uh, super attack greatly raises defense for one turn, it causes supreme damage. And passive is changes tech key spheres to rainbow key spheres if the character is the first attacker at the start of the turn. So this is something that you can't really uh, decide because when the turn starts, you know, whatever unit, whichever cooler is, uh, you know, in that first slot is the first attacker, they will... Wait, hold on, actually. Let me think about this for a second. If it's the first attacker at the start of the turn, when they say attacker, it usually means after the attack, right? So would the orbs change like right after the animation plays for their super attack? So like you will get the rainbow key spheres the next turn? Because what I was thinking was, yeah, when the, when the turn started, whichever metal cooler is in that first slot will have their orb changing passive activated, right? So I'm actually not too sure how that works. Anyways, moving on, uh, attack and defense plus 40% per Wicked Bloodline category ally on the team up to 200% and then recovers 10% HP at the start of the turn, recovers an additional 5% HP at the end of the turn with three or more Rainbow Key Spears obtained plus an additional attack and defense plus 10% per Key Sphere obtained when there's another ally uh, whose name includes Metal Cooler attacking in the same turn. So this guy's a mix of attack and defense, 10% as opposed to uh, 25% for just attack or just defense per key sphere obtained. And uh, instead of getting uh, the dodge chance or debuff the enemy, this guy's going to be healing you up to 15% with three rainbow key spheres, which is pretty decent, especially if you have the Viz LR metal cooler on your team, right? That guy's going to be healing you for like 35%. This guy's at an additional 15%, so when you have both, it's like 50% healing, which is pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so we have the Int Metal Cooler there. Moving on to the STR one. Leader skill is Movie Bosses, Category key plus 3. HP, Attack, and Defense plus 77%, or all types key plus 3. HP, Attack, and Defense plus 40%. And then Super Attack, greatly raises defense for one turn and causes supreme damage. And passive changes Fizz Key Spheres to Rain. Hold on. Page unresponsive. That's weird. I'm gonna say wait. Okay. And uh, where was I? Attack and defense plus 40% per Wicked Bloodline category ally on the team, up to 200%. All allies attack and defense plus 20%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 20% for extreme class allies with three or more rainbow key spheres obtained, plus an additional attack plus 25% per key sphere obtained when there is another ally whose name includes Metal Cooler attacking in the same turn. So essentially, this is the support of the team up to 40% attack and defense with three rainbow key spheres, and uh, the remaining parts of his passive are essentially the same. So we got you know the orb changing here, we got the up to 200% attack and defense, and then 25% uh, attack for every key sphere obtained when you have a metal cooler on the same rotation. So this is the support, really, really nice. And last but not least, we have the Fizz metal cooler. Leader skill is revenge category key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 77%, or all types key plus three, HP attack and defense plus 40%. Super attack greatly raises defense for one turn and causes supreme damage to enemy. Passive changes int key spheres to rainbow key spheres if the character is the first attacker at the start of turn. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure the way that I initially understood it is correct in the sense that whichever of these metal coolers you have in that first slot at the start of your rotation or start of your turn will have their orb changing passive activated. So let's say, you know, you start an event and in that first rotation, you have the Fizz Metal Cooler in that first slot. Then he'll change Int Key Spheres. And then if you have the STR guy instead, then he'll change uh, Fizz Key Spheres. This guy will change his Tech Key Spheres, depending on who is in that first slot at the start of the turn. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Anyways, uh, back to the Fizz Metal Cooler. So yeah, changing Int to Rainbow and then 
Attack and Defense plus 40% per Wicked Bloodline. Category Ally up to 200%, recovers 15% of damage dealt as HP, and then recovers an additional 5% of damage dealt as HP with 3 or more Rainbow Key Spheres obtained, plus an additional defense plus 25% per Key Sphere obtained when there is another ally whose name includes Metal Cooler attacking in the same turn. So just like the HDL one, this guy's going to be more of a tank, but also a uh, healer at the same time. So anybody that's watched the channel for a while now knows that I usually value defense a lot more than I value offense, right? So, I mean, my two favorite coolers out of the five have got to be the Fizz one and the AGL one, just because both of them are going to be much better defenders compared to the other metal coolers, even though they don't hit as hard. And uh, both of them are going to be reasons why you can probably stay alive in harder events because this guy's healing you, the AGL one is dodging, and uh, all of them are really good. Don't get me wrong, all five of the metal coolers look very, very strong, but my personal favorites are the Fizz one and the AGL one. And uh, third would probably be... I mean, I do love a support unit, so the third one would probably be the STR metal cooler. And... Uh, yeah, the other ones are pretty close, I gotta say. I mean, they're all good, once again. This team is very, very good. Um, I mean, it's probably gonna be the best free-to-play team in the game. I mean, it makes sense because it's coming out after the Ginyu Force and the Team Bardock, so it shouldn't be worse. But I think it's actually gonna be quite a bit better than Ginyu Force and Team Bardock. So if you guys have been on the fence about farming these metal coolers and getting them awakened uh what are you waiting for there's no more reason to wait man go do it take the time farm them out and get them ready for the extreme sea awakenings which are dropping in less than 24 hours from the time this video comes out and of course as you guys saw in a recent video i've been putting in a lot of time recently trying to get these guys to max level links they're not quite there yet but hopefully they will be by the time that i need to showcase the team in a video so make sure to keep an eye out for that and uh, that's gonna do it guys for today's video those are the details for all five of the free-to-play metal coolers um, as expected they are all quite similar in a lot of ways but with minor differences that all make them unique from one another and uh, this will definitely be a really really fun team to run so I uh, hope you guys are excited for it the Extreme Z Awakenings, once again, are dropping in less than 24 hours from the time this video comes out at 2 a.m. Eastern on September 22nd. So, uh, that's all I gotta say, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. Sub to the channel if you're new, hit that notification bell so that YouTube knows you wanna stay up to date with all my latest content. And until next time, have an awesome, awesome day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.